Hi everyone, this is Richard. Let's get started using Visual Studio Code. Let's go on Activities, Visual Studio Code, and let's open it up. Okay, so let's create some applications. I'm going to open up a folder. Let's just open up in Documents because we can open up anywhere. I'm going to open it up right here. Create a folder and let's call it Dart Apps. Okay, and I hit Enter. And then I'm going to create maybe a, in Windows you would right click, but in GNU Linux most of the times you would hit create folder. I think that's the same thing with um, Conqueror on KD. I'm not positive. I don't remember that actually. Um, so let me think here. What would I would create? I'm going to say console simple as a web, app, as, as a um, Dart application. It's going to be my first one on this Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to say, if I click right here, right here, debug, and then I'm going to click right here, debug console. Here, I'm going to click on the terminal. So the terminal is the same thing as the terminal right here, but it's a lot more convenient, isn't it? So just to have it right here, that's really cool. So I'm going to say stage hand. What are my options again? Oh yeah, console simple right there, okay? Stage hand, console simple. All right, so what stage hand does is it sets, I click on this part right here, the explorer, and that gives me the basic framework of a program, right? So I don't need to type all that out. There's some other parts of it itself. I don't need to type all those stuff out, create those files. This just does it for me. So it's, it makes it nice and simple. All right, so I think most of this stuff is pretty straightforward. It's There's nothing really remarkable behind any of this stuff. There's um, When you go to view, this, 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 this are the same thing as these right on the bar right here, okay? So view, explorer, search, git. So what are these? Explorer, that's basically just the structure and the files for your application. Search find something, find the prints um, on your program. That's all that that is. Git, we don't have Git information just yet, so we don't have a Git account, so we're going to ignore that for quite a while. Um, debug, so debug right here, you hover over it. Oh, by the way, this is the extensions. This is where the Dart code um, plugin is. So extensions, this is where the run button is. So start debugging is the same thing as run. You click on it, Dart command line, and then it sets it up. So what you do is if you want to get back here again and run the program back here, hit debug, and it runs, okay? Debug console. I'm not sure why it's not under output, but it isn't. It's under debug console. That's the output we get, okay? Um, what you also can do is you can actually hit Function 5 button, F5, up at the top of your keyboard, and it does the same exact thing. It runs the program as well, okay? And so a couple of things um, th that I really enjoy, terminal being right inside of here. Um, Dart, the, the Visual Studio Code does detect what version of Dart you are actually using, and there will be a warning sign if you're using an outdated version. So if it says you're using an old version, get a new version, all you have to do, like we mentioned, if you're on Windows, just hit the update for GNU Linux, right click, move to trash, go to www.dartlang.org, um, uncompress, just um, uh, download it right inside of here, and you're good to go. All right. Um, there's the same functions as we would expect for any editor itself. So there's autocomplete right here. If there's any question of something that you don't get, push control space and it'll actually open it up a little bit, explain it a little bit more. I really like that feature also because sometimes when you're just like this, you don't really have much information. You hit control enter. I'm in space, control space, excuse me. It expands it a little bit. If you make a mistake and you run the program, it'll give you error you can always head back to the file, right, with the Explorer. And the debug console, because that's the output, remember? It says there's something wrong here. You go to output, nothing there, and problems. Expect to find 
a semicolon, as well as undefined name on line three. Oh, okay, that helps you out. And then I hit F5 again. Debug console. Oh, what just happened there? F5 one more time. And it runs the program one more time, okay? So really nice, I like it that, um, that way. Let's open up and let's create a simple web application. Open folder. Let's create a folder. Let's call it simple web. Enter and then OK. And so there's nothing here. So I'm going to create right here debug console again terminal. Let's help, let stagehand help us out. Stagehand web simple. And it creates it all. So if you come here, all of these things, the index, all this, if you don't know what we're doing right here, don't worry about it. I'm just showing that that's what Stagehand does. It creates all of these things for you, these files that you don't have to manually create by yourself. All right. Um, then it says to provision required packages, run pub get. Do you remember when we said pub global activate stage hand? Remember when we did that? What pub actually is, that's the package manager. A package manager basically is a way of getting all of your, getting a bunch of different applications or small programs and making it a part of your program. For example, like say, for example, I'm going to make a cake from scratch. I don't really make a cake from scratch, meaning I don't grow the wheat, grind it down, turn it into flour, right? I just go to the store and I buy the flour because somebody already did that for me, packaged it, and now I can go out and buy it and then and skip that step, right? So that's one of those things that's done for me. Well, what if I, I had to make a really complicated web application, but because it's complicated, there are some things that somebody may have already done, like some parts of the program they may have already made that I could just incorporate. I could just use it into my own system, right? So I don't have to create it all by hand all over again. That's pretty cool. But if somebody somewhere in the world created a little package or a little a program that I can use for in my system, I'd have to search the whole internet for that. Okay, so what we have in Pub Package Manager is a standardized way, a straightforward way to save all, where people can make these packages, make these programs, send it to a central area. And then just by using the Pub Package Manager, it grabs these programs that we need as we need them. And so we don't have to go searching around for them. It's very, very handy. So the Pub Package Manager does a couple of things. Not only does it do Pub Get, so by saying pub get, it actually gets these, downloads them from the internet, and brings it into our program. We have this file called pubspec.yaml. This was created by Stagehand. This actually is just a description of the name, the version, um, the, any dependencies. Dependencies, dev dependencies. Dependencies basically are those small packages, right, that your program absolutely needs to work. So in the cake example, flour. If you don't have flour, you don't have a cake. At least I don't think so. Um, so you, that's one of the dependencies you absolutely have to have. So this is kind of a list of small programs that you have to have in your browser. I'm sorry, in your application that the package manager gets for you. But you have to display to, to type in this sometimes ahead of time, find out what you actually need. And so then the pub will actually get it for you. And you could get pub get right here. Command pub got it. That doesn't always work actually. Um, right click, pub get. That doesn't always work either. So sometimes you have to like restart the program for that to work. Otherwise, you'll just have to type pub get right here, and that works every single time that I've tested it. Okay, this doesn't always work when you click that button. All right. Um, other things to keep in mind when you have a web program, you can't actually hit the debug. This does not actually work for a web program. So anytime you have a program that has index.html, styles.css, that's a web application. You can't actually yet 
hit this button right here. What you can actually do is go with pub serve and just type that in. And again, because it's the terminal, it's nice and convenient. You don't have to go over, grab, get the terminal and type it in there. So it's super convenient. I love that part. I'm going to open up Chromium. And it says serving simple web on localhost 8080. So we would go to localhost 8080. And that's our web application. Notice how quick it was. So it was nice and quick. It opened it up. It um, displayed this with no difficulty delay whatsoever. But what if I don't want Chromium or Dartium? I'm sorry, it's Dartium. What if I don't want Dartium? I want to use Firefox. So I got Firefox. I can use that as well. So I will type localhost 8080, compiling simple web. It's going to take a couple of seconds, but it does the same exact thing. So another real bonus behind Visual Studio Code is you don't need to use Dartium. You can if you want to for speed purposes, but you don't actually have to. And that, I think, is really, really nice. So in other words, what happens is Visual Studio Code detects, does the browser have a Dart VM? If yes, then just go ahead and serve the information. If the answer is no, it compiles it to JavaScript and automatically sends it through. You don't have to actually make any changes. It does it for you. So for those reasons, I think that this is really an awesome environment itself. So if you make changes um, to the web, your Dart, I can also put hello world. Whoops. I can also do that. Just hit save. This is Mozilla Firefox. Redo it, recompile it. So notice I didn't need to do anything else. All I had to do is the refresh and hello world. With Dartium, of course, it would be much quicker. It would be, you know, virtually instantaneous. So those are the features of Visual Studio Code. I think this is simple or similar enough to the Dart editor as well as the Atom editor in the past that you shouldn't, if this is your first time setting this up, you shouldn't have difficulty with um, using the previous videos that I made years ago and using the Visual Studio Code. If you do have problems at all, please leave a comment in the comment section. Don't let it go. If you have a question, you better believe bunches of other people have the same exact question. Don't feel, um, don't be afraid to speak up and just write it out. If you have any other input, I would really appreciate it as well. Okay. So thank you very much. Let's move on.